Why do you think you guys didn't like each other? Besides him being, being a complete ass. <laughs> <laughs> How well do you recall going up to introduce yourself to Jimmy Connors for the first time sure. shortly before you guys yeah. played? I didn't really have a chance. Hey, I'm John McEnroe. You know, it was more like he brushed me off before I'd even had a chance to say it. So I was like, oh my God, this guy's intense. Um, and that's, I mean, I knew enough about, even as a kid, you know, that people do weird things. and. It's, hey, I'm Jimmy Connors, nice to meet you. Relax, so you play better. You know, I can understand where right. he was coming to right. show this kid, and, and then maybe I'll acknowledge his existence after I kick his ass. But so that was the big tournament for you because you make it to the semifinals of Wimbledon Center Court, only 18 years old. Even though you lose to him, you end up beating him later in an event at Madison Square Garden that he didn't even finish when it was clear he was losing. Um, but why do you think the two of you have had so little respect for each other over the years? And when, if ever, do you think that's changed? No, 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 we, no. We, we, we don't like each other, you know? And I think that if we were in a room now, we could talk. We always had respect for each okay. other. That's absolutely untrue. Um, I always respected Jimmy Connors as far as, the only guy that's ever tried on a tennis court harder than Jimmy Connors is Rafael Nadal, in my book. And he's not far behind. Every time I'd look in the mirror before I play him or someone else, I'd say to myself, "Is am I trying as hard as Jimmy Connors?" So I definitely, again, with him, is I hope that I made him better, and I know he made me better. Why do you think you guys didn't like each other? Besides him being a complete ass. <laughs> okay, I mean, and, why, and him thinking I was. Well, okay, why, like, oh, why is there that obvious, feeling between the two? Obviously, uh, there's. Uh, <laughs> I, we're, we sort of have some sort of Irish, you know, sort of ancestry that, you know, we might be somewhat volatile or have, you know, a, uh, get, get a little upset, you know, maybe more easily than, than mothers. But I mean, from his perspective, I could understand and I'd be the same way if some 18 year old kid and I'm like number one or two in the world and he's trying to take my mantle or he'd become, you know, the number one American, I can see why he would not like that and want to do everything in his power to make sure that didn't happen. So that's, you know, from a competitive a aspect, I understand that. And we're not out there, like, let's go have dinner afterwards. So you only see, we only see what's happening sort of on the court. Mm -hmm. So it's difficult to be able to sort of take a step back and say we're human beings. You get all like worked up, crazed. You thought uh, him and Pete Rose were uh, separated at birth. Yeah. Well, they, 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 Elaborate they, on that. They, well, they're, I mean, they look like twins to me. You know, they had those same haircuts and the way they played, you know, that intensity when Pete Rose ran over, what, what was it? Uh, Ray Foss or whatever it was in the you All-Star yeah. game, and you're like, what in God's name is this guy doing? Breaks the guy's leg or ruins his knee or whatever it was. And you're thinking, this, this guy's going 110% every time. And he, 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 I, I, maybe I didn't forget how he crushed me when I shook his hand. But um, you know, that, that level of like, they had this chip on their shoulder, like everyone was against them. So I. I just thought those, I literally you know, would look at those two as like almost the exact same people. Tell me about the senior tour event you were playing with Jimmy Connors where he walks off the court midway through and the conversation the two of you had in the locker room that got him back Well, up. actually the conversation wasn't that bad. I mean, he walked off and I was winning. I should have le left well enough alone, but being the moron that I am, you know, I tried to convince him, look, this is better because, look, we're, this isn't the finals of Wimbledon now. For, for us, it was a big match because we were playing in Dallas and um, it was sort of a uh, good crowd. I mean, it's not like it was a Wimbledon crowd, but there was energy and people wanted to see us play and we were battling. And he got fed up. I don't know if it was because he got some bad call. I don't even remember now, to be honest, because it could happen. It could be, who knows? It depends on who you ask. Or he was mad because I was, he thought I was making fun of him or I was doing something he didn't like or whatever. It was hot. Also, you know, he got hot under the collar. And so he just walked off the court. He said, I've had it, man. I'm like, Jimmy, you can't do that, you know? And then. I, of course, which I have this unique way of doing, I have uh, an ability to get people so mad at me that they've never tried harder, you know, or they take it out somehow on the court and they give 120%. And so I've managed to do that with Lendl and Connors and others, you know, because they get, how oh, he's act like that, what a jerk. And so um, he went back out there and I started getting a little bit tight. And the next thing you know, the crowd's booing, you know, he boo him off the court because he, how do you leave a court and just quit? 
I mean, that's not Jimmy Connors, right? They're booing me at the end of the match. Like, wh how, how did I get booed? At least, you know, I, I wish they'd get the whole story. Maybe they'd understand John a little better.